Is this okay? Yeah, this is terrific. Actually, any place is terrific as long as it's with you, my love. You uh, seem to have quite an appetite this morning. Well, do you wonder? We never did get around to dinner last night. Shh, not so loud. These people are going to say we're in love. I don't care. I don't care what they say anymore. Oh, rest. What's the matter? After Peter told us about that telegram, I totally forgot to ask him how Laura had gotten on last night. Well, I'm sure there weren't any problems. He would have told us. Anyway, she's going to be here this afternoon to go to work, and uh, you can ask her yourself. Yeah. I'm really anxious to see her. Do you want to know something? Honestly, I feel very guilty about not having dinner with her last night. I hope she ate something. I'm sure she did. Did you notice who's sitting over there? You mean monitor? You notice she didn't exactly jump up and run over to offer congratulations? Well, honey, it's, it's kind of an awkward situation for her. I'm sure she doesn't want to make us feel uh, uncomfortable. Good manners never made anyone feel uncomfortable. Well, I don't think she means to be rude. Does it ever occur to you that you defend her a lot? I'm doing nothing of the kind. Now, come on, don't start out by being jealous, huh? I am not the least little bit jealous. I just think you spend an extraordinary amount of time being chivalrous toward her. You just got through telling me that good manners are important. Never mind what I told you. I meant for her. <laughs> you know, in a way, we, uh, we're indebted to her. How did that happen? Well, she set Laura straight when she'd adopted this uh, new grown-up image of hers. Left to her own devices, she could have really made a mess of it. She's the one... I am not going to get into that discussion right now. You know how I feel about that relationship. You can't hardly call it a relationship. Friendship, whatever it is. Oh, I guess, in all honesty, I just... I don't like the fact that Monica always seems to intrude herself into our personal lives. I really wish she would just live her own life and let us do the same. You keep looking at them. What are you thinking? Uh, nothing. I wasn't even aware I was looking. Well, then you're the only one in the room who isn't. Come on, level with me. I mean, how do you feel seeing the two of them sitting there together? Do you, do you feel resentment or, or what? Oh, expect me not to have mixed emotions about it. I'm not jealous. I mean, that would be childish. Just the way Leslie flaunts her victories. Rick, among them. That's what irritates me. Well, I don't know what makes you say that she's flaunting, Rick. It's her attitude. That's what it is. I've got him. You don't. Well, she's been looking over here, too, you know. And if it isn't a look of triumph, I don't know what you'd call it. Oh, come on, Monica. I think that's all in your imagination. You know, if I were you, I would just put Rick and Leslie right out of my mind, and I would concentrate on somebody else, like uh, Alan Quartermain, for oh, instance. All right, don't worry, don't worry. I am not going to cause a scene. I hope I have too much composure for that. Well, just let the past die. Rick and Leslie are happily married now, and that, that's the end of it. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure of that if I were you. There's always trouble in paradise. If not now, then later. So, let them be happy now. Trouble will come soon enough. Monica, Gail? Are you... I am not being ungenerous. I'm being realistic. Half the fun of the holidays is anticipation. Peter told me about the uh, telegram you got last night. Oh, that. Can you believe it? I mean, it really just came out of the blue. The two of us just cannot understand where the attorney got her name. Or even that we were interested in adopting a baby. <sighs> I don't know. Peter figures that we got on some sort of mailing list after the first try. Well, it does seem a little strange. That's true. Uh, you know, I don't want to butt in. But are you sure about this decision not to adopt? I mean, is it really what you want? Hmm? I'm sure, Audrey. Why do you ask? Well, it just seems a little unusual. I was just wondering if you'd 
been acting a little hastily. I mean, you and Peter in coming to your decision. No. We made that decision long before the telegram came. We've decided to put the entire idea just out of our minds and uh, concentrate on other things. But even when, when this opportunity has been practically put in your lap? Audrey, now, we don't know that. There's just no telling how complicated these things can become. <laughs> and really, I guess it's the first time that I thought about Peter over myself. He's afraid. If we started something like adoption proceedings and something went wrong, he's afraid that I'd, I'd just fall into little pieces. And he's right. No, we have made the decision, and I'm not going to back off of it. Well, now, what makes you think that something could go wrong? Well, just past experiences. I mean, look at the whole... the, the whole Phil Brewer affair. I mean, I, you know, if... if something like that surfaced again, it would just ruin everything. But it didn't exactly surface the last time. Someone deliberately uncovered it and notified the adoption agency. Yeah, but if someone did it once, why not twice? Well, I suppose it could happen. Oh, still, someone who loves children as much as you do. Mm. Well, I can't deny the fact that I don't think about it. Of course, I haven't told Peter, but sometimes at night I, I lie awake and just, I just wish. But I, I know that we have made the right decision. Well, as long as you thought it through. Oh, I've thought and I've thought. I mean, ever since we lost Mike and, and Martha, I, I've come to believe that I just wasn't meant to have children. Oh, Diana, that's not really thinking, though, is it? I mean, that's feeling. It was tragic, one disappointment on top of another, but I don't see any divine plan in it. It's just a lot of terribly bad luck and misfortune. Well, maybe I'm misfortune's fair-haired child. I must say, I, I still go by parks and playgrounds and, and watch children. I just, I just wonder what it'd be like if I... I'm not going to do that anymore. It's just, it's just terribly destructive. Audrey, when, when Martha died, I was really frightened. I thought I was going to lose control. But somehow, I did conquer it. And I managed to put it in some very private place in, inside of me. Locked it behind a door that I never intend to open. And that's the way I've managed to get my sanity. I'm uh, sorry to be so long, Audrey. No, no, it's all right. Diane and I were keeping each other company. I was just telling Audrey about our decision not to adopt. Yeah. Yeah, it's all settled now. Hello. I'm Orville Redenbacher. way to put it. Why never? Of all the ungrateful, thankless. Um, were you just going to disappear without a word? No, of course not. I was waiting to tell you. Well, then tell me now. What's gotten into you? I just can't go through with it, that's all. I know now that I'd be too miserable for the rest of my life. That I is... can't give up the baby. What do you mean you can't give up? That is the silliest thing I have ever heard in my life. After all the trouble that we have gone through to make this whole thing possible for you, after what I've gone through to help you, me personally, don't, don't you think that somehow you owe me something? And I'm not just talking about the money that you've never paid me. You've been wonderful and I appreciate everything. I do but not I... want your appreciation. I want what's coming to me. I can't pay my bills with appreciation, and you can't either. I'll get a job someplace, and I'll pay you everything that's coming to you, I promise. How do you know? How can you be so sure? You couldn't get yourself a job here. What makes you think you're going to get yourself a job someplace else? 
Or are you thinking about that offer from Jerry Sherman? You're just going to pick up your baby and, and hire yourself off to Hollywood, is that it? I can try. And you can mess things up, too. You can really ruin your chances there. And then what? Then I'll learn to do something else. I'm not stupid. I can, uh, if I have to teach myself to type, I can do that. Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. You're going to take yourself off and you're going to enroll in uh, secretary college, right? Has anybody ever told you that people charge money for those classes? They have night classes in a high school. You do not have a sensible bone in your body. I can't believe what I'm hearing. My heavens! Here you have one of the best opportunities that anybody has ever had, and you are throwing it away with both hands. I'm doing what I have to do, that's all. You are selfish. That's what it is. I don't know why I'm so surprised. Nobody ever remembers anything good that anybody ever does for them. All they ever think about is themselves. Does it matter to you one bit all the work that Mr. Wallace has put in on this adoption thing? Or the cost, the expenses he's had to undergo? Does it matter to you that you are breaking your word to both of us? It does matter, yes. But I can't give him up. Why can't you understand that? <sighs> I'm sorry about Mr. Wallace. I really am. But he'll get paid back, too. I promise. I want to tell you something. Being sorry isn't good enough. It simply isn't good enough. You came to me, and out of the goodness of my heart, I took you and your baby in. I gave you a roof over your heads and, and food in your mouths. But... What you owe me goes far beyond any kind of rent money that you haven't paid or babysitting fees that you haven't paid. I have done a thousand things for you that you can't even measure in terms of money. And this is the way you repay me. Look, I'm sorry. That's all I can say. Well, I've told you before, being sorry isn't enough. Well, I don't care. I don't know what else to do. I don't want to give up my baby, not for you or anyone else. I am going to keep him and try to get a job to support both of us. Now, I'm leaving, and you cannot stop me. Oh, go on, then. If all you're thinking about is yourself. But I will never do anything to help another human being again as long as I live. I treated you as though you were my own daughter, and like all children, you turned on me. Well, I was a fool ever to have expected anything else, but I will never learn. Who is it? It's me, Frank Wall. Oh, excuse me. Come in. What? Oh, what's going on? Do you know what this wretched child is planning to do? She wants to run away. I want to keep my baby. Well, perhaps you'll be interested in my news, then. I just received a telegram from the tailors, and they aren't interested in adopting a baby. What? You can read it for yourself. That's wonderful. That's the best news I've ever had. I don't believe. Something must have gone on between them that was aggravating enough to bring on the attack. It was. The uh, symptoms are disappearing now, and uh, she's coming out of the toxemia just fine. The baby, on the other hand, is... Uh, a different story. At birth, it had uh, respiratory distress syndrome. We've been keeping it in the uh, preemie intensive care unit, naturally. And yesterday, we discovered a murmur and what appears to be a patent ductus. Doesn't look like it's going to close by itself, so we, uh, we may have to operate. I'd like you to take a look at the baby, check it out, Keith, and then tell me what you think. Okay, let's go. 